we have a kick drum here, we have a snare sound here, and we have some kind of hi-hat sound here. Now we can just, this is very simple and crude because we're hard coding everything. Ideally, we want to be able to save presets. So um, we can just, let's say we want to have a kick drum on the one and five, just a really basic uh, beat. We're not trying to be original here right now. We just want to get something going. Um, and then we want a hi-hat on every eighth note, note, of course. It's way too slow. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have a kick drum, we have a snare and a hi-hat just to have some kind of basic um, beat functionality here. Let's just do it this way. At a tempo change. So hard coding a beat in Max, <laughs> which is way, way cool, I would say. Which is way cool, but um, it's it's okay. also very inflexible because, as you see, I need to switch cables to to change the beat, and um, <clears throat> but this is what we need right now. So we we just want to keep this simple beat, and now um, we want to prove that we're more original than that. And we want to mix it up a little bit. So what could we do that you can't really do with a normal sequencer? We could, for example, say, um, let me see, I, I, have, I have the patch I prepared printed out here beside me, but I need to read it again. So what we could do is, um, we could actually say we want to have a second beat. Let's just make it identical. And we're gonna, we're gonna use uh, MIDI channel two here, and we're gonna add a second MIDI track in live. And we need to switch both tracks to um, Oh, sorry, that's an audio track, a MIDI track. And we're going to switch it to in. And then we're going to select MIDI from max one, channel one. And then the other one from max one, channel two. So we should now receive these here. And then we're going to use a second SSD sampler here and now we're going to use the jazz now let's take something different let's take electronic i've no idea idea i don't remember how they sound All right you know let's let's just take this for the moment so that's our second kit okay 36 is always, in my experience, the, uh, uh, the kick drum. And um, so most instrument makers adhere to that standard. So we have a kick, snare, hi-hat, just a different hit. And now we could, we could, of course, have them both play at the same time. Mix it a little bit here. But that 
that is cool, but it isn't awesome yet. So now, uh, we we let's say we. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is um, we want to decide for each beat randomly whether it's going to be played by kit one or kit two. So as you may remind, uh, remember, there's the object that's called decide, which I presented you in the selection of random functions last week. So every time you bang it, it will just give you a zero or a one randomly. And now every time, every time we get a count, we want it to say either zero or one. So this is gonna be our zero. Well, let's, let's, let's call them one and two. This is our, gonna be our number two. And we now want to have a switch where we want to send the step number to either this counter or this counter. Just to see what happens. It might, might really be stupid. It might be stupid for three hours. And if we stick with it, it might sound really excellent. So that's, that's how I found out like a lot of the things that I really like and that I think are unique about the, the work that I do. And I'm just, I'm playing it here live with you. So we're, we're exploring here. This is also why I don't really write tutorials and I don't really present you technical info because I, I think it makes sense to learn the things as we need them. Um, so, uh, yeah. Zero one zero one zero one. So what we now need to do is we need an object called gate, which and we need two outlets because we have two step sequencers. Gate output two currently closed. Gate output one currently closed. So um, we're gonna put this here. Put this here. Disconnect from the counter for a second. Uh, Alt click and drag to select multiple cables. And if we have a look at the help file for this, we will see that in the left inlet, we specify the gate number to open, where zero means all gates are closed. And if we select one, the first outlet is open. If we select two, the second is open. If we select three, the third is open. And if we select select zero again all are closed so we need a number one to send the counter uh, and and the things to pass through are passed into the right inlet so incoming gated messages so we need a one here to send it to this um select object and a, a two to send it here so since we get a zero and a one we need to add one here we could always monitor it either with a um, with a cable or just by hovering our mouse over the cable if we have selected event probe on under the debug menu. Okay, so let's try this. Oh, I, I should also specify to add what and that would be one here. Let's just listen for a second.
Oh, we could also mess with the count direction. You may remember that we had zero for straight uh, up, um, one for down, and two for up-down. Let's just go for it. <laughs> 